It's difficult to find words to really express the the feelings of Nigerians. When they were going through the problems they had in South Africa under the apartheid regime, you know, we stood by them. We didn't bother about, you know, the problems we had. We, we also had our own problems. We had problems of poverty, but we're still prepared to make that sacrifice. It's, well, it's a bit disappointing. As a student, I, I remember you know, the, the time when many South Africans were on scholarship in Nigerian universities studying. Many South Africans were teaching in our, in our high schools because we understood that they were going through a very difficult uh, patch in their history. But, as, you know, as, uh, as the saying goes, you know, human memory is very short. Emeka Ndukwe, a retired Nigerian diplomat living in Canada, recalls with fond memories the days of apartheid when Nigeria played the big brother role by offering South Africa a bold shoulder to lean on. The recent upsurge in xenophobic attacks in South Africa has been of great concern to people around the globe. Leaders of the African community in Canada embarked on a peaceful protest at the South African High Commission to express their feelings. We condemn, we denounce xenophobia in South Africa. If you look at South Africa, most of uh, all the African countries helped to support um, South Africa to gain independence from the apartheid government. So I think Everybody in Africa um, has been of a help to South Africa. So I, I don't think it's a good idea for them to be killing our own brothers and sisters in South Africa. Some analysts are digging into the root of the violence that is now spilling over to migrant workers. In fact, they are asking real questions about the driving force behind the brutal act. I, I personally know South Africans you know, in, uh, almost in every continent in the world. So. Telling foreigners to leave South Africa, it's like ignoring the roots of the problem. Foreigners are investors. They are there not to pick money from the road, but they are there to work and to contribute to the success, to drive the economy of the South African people. But of course, the uh, people of South Africa, and when I say the people, I'm referring to those yet at the bottom. The first people they can have access to are those who look like them, who are struggling at the bottom. There has been a lack of shared prosperity, you know, that trickles down from from the from the top earners down to those at the bottom, and uh, they are obviously expressing their frustration by taking it out on on the foreigners. I I think the people of South Africa should stand up and demand public policies that's, that seek to address uh, the problem of, of shared prosperity. And I think the leadership in South Africa should stand up and, and seek ways uh, to bring the people along. So it goes back to the leadership of the South African people. It may well be that the, the generation that is, uh, you know, doing all of this uh, nasty stuff you know, didn't, didn't even read the history, the history of the, their struggle, because if they did, I, I, think, I don't think they would, you know, attack foreigners in this manner. They may, they may register their, you know, displeasure with their government for not, you know, carrying out the, the right kind of economic reforms that would generate employment for people, because at the end of the day, all of this boils down to heavy unemployment, you know, and uh, grinding poverty. In Canada, Joy Usiago, NTA News.